acknowledging that God has brought together Dennis and Christy. Who presents this woman to be married to this man? ready? Yes. You guys may be seated, please. You good? You okay? It's been a big day. It's a great day. Um, this is God's intention, is for man and woman to be married. It started out in Genesis 2 that way. And so let's just invite his presence here this morning or this afternoon. Will you join me in prayer? Uh, Father God, we just come before you and just marvel at your wonderful plan for us, that it wasn't good for us to be alone, and that you made a perfect companion for Dennis and a perfect companion for Christy. And Lord, we just ask for your presence to be here. We invite your Holy Spirit, and we just ask this to be a marriage that honors you as they grow to learn to love each other and respect each other. We just ask this to be a marriage that just like a, a city on a hill that just glows and everyone looks at and says, that's the kind of marriage I want. We pray these things in your precious son's name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's finally here. I, I've had the privilege to uh, counsel with uh, Dennis and Christy these oh, the last couple weeks and uh, really got to know them. But I know that some of you might not know the full story, as Paul Harvey would once say. <laughs> and uh, Dennis is from South Africa and came to the United States in 1999 and, uh, and left during the whole apartheid and, and, and lost everything and, and left on the verge of almost being killed. Right. Yes. And uh, so he's given it an amen. And, uh, and came to the United States and immediately, with not very much, started found, found a vineyard church out there and started serving. And he got involved with Alpha out there, and he got involved with feeding 3,000 people on Thanksgiving Day and came out here to start a new business, a catering business here. And, uh, and he, during this whole process, he kept on applying for citizenship. And uh, I'll just fast forward a little bit. He had lost everything. He went from being an extremely wealthy man in Africa to a wealthy man in L.A. and had lost everything, came to our church and just started serving, never shared any of his problems or anything, just wanted to serve and honor God and see people come to the Lord. And uh, last year, or last March, he applied for his third appeal with the uh, immigration service. And uh, I'm, I drove him over to this hearing, and it was about a four-hour hearing, and, uh, and just heard this, a story that Dennis never shared with me. And uh, the, the judge said, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go back. And uh, we walked out, and there was no hope. The hope that he was going to go back to was mostly like he was going to come back, go back to Africa destitute and most likely lose his life. And I remember driving the four hours back and not able to say a word, because, which is tough for a pastor. And, uh, <laughs> and I just remember we prayed in the car and said, this doesn't seem right, but God is a God of justice, and God has a plan that's beyond what we can even see. And during this time, he was working with this beautiful young lady here. You know, she's going to get embarrassed because she, Christy, if you don't know Christy, she is the kind of person who loves to be behind the scenes. She didn't even want to come down the aisle. She just wanted to come through the side door. <laughs> it's like, no, this is your day. <laughs> no, she's embarrassed. She won't even look at you. But uh, Christy is this amazing mother and an amazing daughter and an aunt and a cousin and a friend and has worked at Hilltop and is one of their most loyal employees. 
And, and she is like this wonderful story in Genesis, this Rebecca. And the story about Rebecca is, is that it was time for Isaac to get married and knew it was time for Isaac to get married. And uh, so Isaac just sent out a servant. And he said, you will know. And came across this wonderful servant that just loved people and served and didn't have any intentions of any gaining a husband or gaining wealth or gaining anything. She just loves people and serves people and doesn't want any recognition for it. Is that right? And so God had this plan. In Romans 13, 5, it says, I am the Lord of hope. I am the Lord of hope. And when it was hopelessness, because his paperwork, he's supposed to go back. But God had brought a Rebecca into his life and said, this is what I brought together. And it's their intention to have a Christian marriage. They want a marriage that honors God. And that, that's why they went, that's why they wanted to have a church wedding. That's why they wanted to have all their friends come here to hear about what an amazing God that they serve. And then, you know, the whole concept of marriage was God's original idea anyway. And that, that two people should come together and that they should be joined as one. In Matthew 10, it says that you should leave your, your mother and father and that you cleave to be one and that no man should separate. And this union is the most sacred of all unions besides your relationship with Jesus Christ himself. And it's one that should demonstrate intimacy and openness and tenderness, respect and honor, and self-giving at all times and sacrifice for each other's happiness. Because what you're about to enter is just not a human contract that fulfills the needs at the Mesa County Courthouse or the judge in Denver but this is a contract between you and God. So we join me one more time in prayer and just let's just ask. Wow, are you guys not amazed at the story? I mean, not very often do you get a chance to do a great wedding like this that seemed impossible. Lord, you are the God of the impossible. And we just give you praise today. And we just ask you, it says that if one can release a 1,000 angels in prayer, then two can release 10,000. And I'm guessing there's 75 here, Lord. So we're asking for the whole army of angels to come down and minister to this marriage. And let it be a, a blessing to all of us. Amen. All right. So we've been meeting for weeks. All this hard work. They've had homework to do plus plan for all this, and plus work, and plus have family obligations, and all this stuff, it's finally paid off. Now, we live in a, a valley that there's a lot of, I just need to tell you something about Dennis. This is Dennis's first wedding, an American wedding. He always caters weddings. He's never been inside a church. And so he really didn't know when she's supposed to come up. And, uh, and we, even though we practice this, he was like, well, where is she? <laughs> Did she leave? <laughs> yeah, and that's what Christy was wondering too. Did Dennis leave? <laughs> but the real hard work isn't just preparing for today. And I know you've been working on this since last night and this morning and, and organizing all this. The real hard work starts the moment you leave this room. And I don't know a lot about farming, even though I grew up here. I don't know a lot about it, but I know it takes a lot of work. You know, the real work is when it comes to the harvesting. Because what happens is, once you start planting the seed, what happens today is that you guys decided, we're going to plant a field. That's where the work comes, and we have to start weeding and start watering and start gathering the fruit. And then you've got to constantly be working on your marriage. What's interesting is that there was a guy in the Bible, and this is written in, um, excuse me, in Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes is written by the wisest man in the whole world besides Jesus Christ, Solomon. And Solomon penned this down, and, and he's talking about this. And it kind of makes you wonder how wise Solomon really could have been. He had a thousand wives. So, but he is called the wisest man who ever walked the earth. 
And he wrote this. He said, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls down and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. It says in verse 10, if one falls down, a friend can help him up. And I was thinking, it really should say a mate, right? But no, you guys are truly friends. You guys have had a friendship for a long time before you decided that you had warmies for each other. Am I not? <laughs> I'm embarrassing her so bad. <laughs> she, she's going to walk out the side door and not greet anybody. <laughs> but that's what Solomon was saying. The best marriages, the best ones, are when the husband and wives are friends. And you guys are getting to know each other, and you're getting to you know, start this new life together. And you guys love to, to work together. Christy comes over and helps Dennis with his salsa business. And Dennis just gives Christy a hard time. So I don't know what he's bringing to the marriage. <laughs> but uh, that uh, South African humor, I guess. But when he says that three chords are not easily broken, did you realize that three chords is the most difficult, the strongest rope that's ever been made? And one strand of the cord represents you, and one strand represents you, and the third strand represents God. Is that when you guys hold on to God, nothing can break you apart. When you put your eyes towards him, <laughs> things just work out amazingly, right? Mm -hmm. And when you see how this marriage was brought together, you can see how this all works. OK? So you guys ready? Yes. All right. I'm saying that for you as well. I'm thinking. <laughs> well, this is the point. This is where we're going to do our vows. OK. Dennis and Christy, since it's your desire to marry, and God has made a vow with his chosen people, you will now take a vow that binds yourself together as husband and wife. Dennis, will you take Christy as your, off, your lawfully wedded wife? <laughs> to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer and poorer, in sickness and in health, to, to love and to cherish, to be faithful and true, until death do you part. If so, answer, I do. I do. This heart is pounding. I'm surprised you're not hearing this. <laughs> He's so nervous. <laughs> All right. You, Christy. You guys ready? Do you take Dennis to be your lawfully wedded husband, to be together in holy matrimony, to have and to hold from this day forward for better and for worse, for richer and poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to be faithful and true until death do you part? If so, answer, I do. I do. Okay. You want to step back here and do your unity candle? Well, we need a lighter. That's a great idea. While they're lighting their candle, what they're bringing into this marriage is a lot of years of family and relationships and experiences. And they are two separate lights right now in the way God intended them to be, in the way he views them as one. And they wanted this to be part of their mar marriage ceremony, is that you can all see this, is that they're saying, I'm taking my individuality, what makes me unique, 
and I'm adding it to be one light. Not to give it away, but to make it stronger and brighter. And we do this, and this has been a tradition in Christian marriages for hundreds of years. And it symbolizes the light that Jesus asked us to be. That that all men would see. And this was the kind of marriage they wanted to be, a light upon a hill.